If even a 5 filter isn't giving you quite the contrast that you need, let me show you one other method that you may want to try. Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No. No. No, I won't. Mm -hmm. I sound better in my head. I recently wanted to make a print from one of the negatives from my chalkboard series, but I've never been able to make a satisfactory print. This print is made with a 5 filter, and it's still flat compared to what it is that I envisioned. So I tried a bunch of different things, such as high contrast developers, um, of course the high contrast filter, lots of dodging and burning. Uh, I even considered intensifying the negative, but I already know from experience that was not going to give me quite the look that I was looking for. It wouldn't, it wouldn't increase the contrast enough for what I envisioned when I shot it. So I decided to go a step further and make a high contrast copy negative to print from. So I made a print from that here, which does have all the contrast that I was looking for. This was actually shot or uh, printed with a one and a half filter. So the other one being way too flat with a five filter, I had to tone it down even more with a one and a half filter. So I'm much more satisfied with this. If you would like to get your own print from any from this photograph or any of the photographs featured in my video series, then you can always go to nakedphotographer.us slash store and see the ones that have featured. Now let me show you how I made a high contrast copy negative. So if you have a negative you need to try to save and get increased contrast from, you can do that on your own. You're going to need a few things to do this. One is a heavy piece of glass or a contact proofer of some type, and then a piece of craft foam. I like to use the quarter inch um, craft foam just from like Walmart or Hobby Lobby. I have two pieces. Um, or any kind of foam just to uh, to press the glass onto because you're going to be making basically a contact sheet. So the same method is going to apply. Uh, the film is going to be your substrate, the negative on top, and then glass presses it all down nice and tight. So you're going to need the same equipment. You're also going to need some tape. <clears throat> Aside from that, some good glass cleaner and negative cleaner. I'm going to use PEC 12 and a PEC pad and then a anti-static cloth uh, to minimize your dust. And then you're going to need film. Now for this, it's a black and white negative, so I don't need to use camera film. You can, but you don't need to. Camera film, if you're making a copy negative uh, from a color negative original, and you want a black and white copy, okay, then you might want to use panchromatic camera film. But since this is a black and white, I'm just making a tonal copy. Um, ortho lift film is fine. The good stuff about this is you can open and handle this under a red safe light. Not an amber safe light like your photo paper. It needs to be red. This will get fogged by an amber. This is inexpensive. This box of 100 sheets of 4x5, I want to say it was something like $27 or something like that. Um, I'm using the Ultrafine brand from Photo Warehouse. Uh, Ilford makes a, an uh, ortho film, which I believe is a true ortho film, not a lip film. Um, it's a little bit more expensive. And then Arista has one from Freestyle. I found that to be even higher contrast, so uh, just adjust your um, developer appropriately. Um, so let's get started. What I'm going to do first is clean the surface of my glass. This is PEC 12. This will get rid of any fingerprints, smudges, things like that, but it does like to leave a haze, so make sure you polish all of that off. Now, take your camera original. You can do this with any size negative. I shot 4x5, but you can do this even with 35 millimeter if you want to. Just use a bigger sheet of orthofilm, um, but you, you do not have to, uh, to shoot large format to do this. Okay, so clean off any dust 
from your original. This is the base side, not the emulsion side. And I'm going to tape the base side down so I have emulsion up. I'm just going to tape this down. All right. Now this film exposes very similar to photo paper. So I've got my negative or my uh, lens stopped down to F11, uh, which is about one stop um, darker than what I normally print at at F8. But that will be fine. So let me move this under where the light's going to be. And now let's turn the lights out to go to the next step. And with a sheet of film, place it emulsion side up on the foam. Take your anti-static cloth and just wipe off any potential dust. Wipe the dust off your original and then line it up on top of the new film. There we go. I'm gonna wipe the dust off of that. And now we're ready to make an exposure. So I'm gonna set my enlarger to a two second increment and I'm going to do the same steps as any kind of contact sheet or a test strip. So let's turn the fan on. Now, before I take this out and process it, let me just say, make a, a note here. You do not control your contrast with contrast filters like you would a print. This does not respond to different colors of light. It's blue sensitive only. So the way that you control your contrast is with the dilution of your developer. So I'm going to put this through a paper developer. It is Kodak Dectol mixed one part Dectol to um, nine parts water. So one to nine ratio and we'll see how that compares. Since this is a piece of film, it's easier to judge it on a light box than against a solid board like you would a print. Technically though, it is a print and you're going to judge it sort of similar. So with the test strip, I have my two, four, six, eight, ten 10 uh, exposure. The 10 is close. I'm actually going to make an exposure at 12. I feel like that's gonna be a little bit better. Just like a print, you're looking to make sure you have your highlights there. Uh, you have enough density there. If you didn't print long enough and your highlights are still white, you're not going to have anything in your next step. So you do want to have enough exposure for your whites. Um, your blacks are going to come in. Make sure you have enough there. So let's go back and make a full exposure at 12 seconds. So looking at test strip, I'm going to give it 12 seconds and we'll see how that turns out. So let's get some more film and we'll expose the whole thing. All right, let's develop that, see how it turns out. So here's my original test strip. Uh, here is the print made from that on the lift film. And this is the one to nine ratio. And looking at it, I find it's not contrasty enough. Now we don't want it to have all the contrast of our final print because we still have another step to go, but we do want to see an increase in contrast. And this is actually pretty close to what I'm getting in a print with a five filter now. So I need to increase a little bit. So I went back and made another one, same exposure, only now to increase the contrast, I have changed the dilution of the developer. So this was one part Dectol to nine parts water. This is one part Dectol to three parts water. So much stronger solution. And I can already see that there is an increase in contrast and density. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one now for the next step. 
So let's go make a test strip printing this onto another piece of film. Now that I have that, I can remove the original negative and put the new copy negative or copy print on the glass instead. So just make sure it's dust free, just as before, and it's oriented the same way. Again, you want it emulsion to emulsion. So in this case, the image is going to appear reversed, and that's all right. All right, once you have it taped down, wipe off any dust, and got a fresh piece of film. Emulsion side up, and then this will be emulsion side down again. And I'm going to do, again, two second increments. Here is the test strip I just made of the positive image onto a piece of film. And I selected the time for eight seconds and created this negative. To put this into perspective, this is the new copy negative. This is the original in-camera negative. So you can already see that there is a huge increase in contrast. So my shadow densities here, shadow and highlight, not much difference in the shadow densities uh, between the highlight densities. Here, there's a dramatic difference. I've got deep, dark highlights, um, which are going to create you know, brighter highlights on the print and deep shadows. You want to make sure when you're doing this that your exposure is still leaving detail in the shadow areas and when you're processing is not going to blow out your highlights that are too dense. So even though I'm increasing contrast, I still need to make sure I have all the information. So go through and make sure that you're selecting a time that has the shadow density you need and then change your developer dilution to get the highlight contrast that you need. So now let's make a final print from this negative and uh, we'll compare that to the old. And those are all the steps. So it's not much more difficult than just making a print. You're only doing it on a sheet of film instead of paper. And then you're taking that and making another print, which ends up being a negative. <clears throat> the best advice that I can give you ultimately, as I said before, just make sure everything is clean. Make sure the glass is clean, the original negative, the copy negative, because any dust is just going to get magnified. Uh, or at least duplicated over and over and over. So the cleaner you can be, the better off the negative will be in the end and the less spotting you'll have to do on your finished print. Thank you again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this one, or if you have a suggestion for a video, uh, please continue to watch and leave a comment.